Hello, and welcome to our zero. Hello, and welcome to our zero, the end of prostate cancer health equity symposium, prostate cancer in the black community film series discussion panel. My name is Chris Bennett, and I'm the director of health equity, community organizing and engagement. Before we jump into our discussion, I'd like to introduce our very talented and esteemed panelists. We're joined by Londi Maduro, the director and filmmaker of The Silent Killer, Reggie Hicks, the filmmaker and creator of If You Are My Brothers, and Terrence Afar Anderson, the filmmaker and producer of the film The Black Walnut. Thank you all so much for joining us, and thank you so much for creating these extremely important films. I want to take a second to have the, film, the filmmakers actually introduce themselves and give us a brief summary of their works. So Londi, we'll start with you, then we'll pass it off over to Terrence, and then Reggie, we'll, we'll have you finish up. Hello, everyone. I am Londi Maduro, and I did the film The Silent Killer, Prostate Cancer in the African American Community. In our film, uh, we had a, a gentleman we call our host <laughs> travel around the United States and follow um, four men at different stages of prostate cancer, as well as interview different uh, scientists, urologists, medical professionals. We held group discussions and really tried to get to the heart of the matter of why African American men are less likely to uh, get tested for prostate cancer and kind of show why it's important to some of the risk factors and that they're getting prostate cancer at younger ages and at more aggressive forms of disease. So we really tried to get that word out and, and show that it doesn't matter, you know, what walk of life you come from. We interviewed hip hop moguls and uh, city councilmen and family men and vegans. It, it really didn't matter. All these men had prostate cancer. So we just really tried to show that it's more about being aware of your health. That's kind of the premise of our film. And again, my name is Terrence Zaffer Anderson. I uh, wrote, produced, and directed the film, uh, The Black Walnut. I am, uh, have been principally all of my life as an artist. I've been a uh, playwright. I've written over 20 plays. Um, and I've always done work. Uh, my, my work as an artist has been to be of service. And so I wanted to communicate messages. That's what my plays have all been about. But in 2009, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, shortly after I was diagnosed, um, because neither of my brothers had been screened, uh, I both I recommended that they both be screened, and my eldest brother was in fact diagnosed. Uh, and I realized the importance of spreading the the word, the message about the importance of being uh, of uh, being screened for prostate cancer. And I wanted to come up with a uh, device, a tool that I could use that could deliver that let the message in a, in a in a very efficient way. Um, again, I am a playwright. I, I produce plays. Uh, they've been produced in San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Washington, and so forth. Um, but I wanted to do something that would be more portable, uh, something that could be transported a lot easier than sending an entire theatrical company, cast and crew to different locations. And it just seemed to be uh, a good idea to do a film. Uh, the Black Walnut is my first feature length film. Uh, it's been an adventure, it's been a great adventure, it's been a blessing. Um, and I, I bought my playwriting, uh, the, my approach to plays, I bought that to bear in producing this film. Uh, I wanted to do something that uh, that would engage people, something uh, that would have a uh, an engaging storyline. And so I produced the film as a as a docu drama, but a novel docu drama, uh, because there's so many aspects of uh, uh, the prostate cancer disparity impacting African American men. Um, I decided to create a story that would allow for the inclusion of those different elements, those different components of the disparity. Um, and so it's a fictionalized story, but to uh, to really bolster that, I brought in real prostate cancer survival warriors portraying themselves in the film. Uh, so it's a novel docudrama, and it's been received very well, and I feel blessed that it has been received that way. And I'm Reggie Hicks, and uh, I am the uh, producer of If You Are My Brothers. Um, and like Terrence, my background uh, has been in really service, um, worked in public media, public radio, and public television most of my career. And so I've always been about uh, being involved in projects that can make and will make a difference. Um, not a filmmaker necessarily, but involved in television a, a great deal. And never have I in my wildest dreams thought I would be a uh, documentarian because my uh, film is a documentary um, it's pretty unique in, in the sense that uh, I have a fraternity brother uh, of mine who 
uh, wanted to make sure that his uh, alumni brothers did knew about his situation. He was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of prostate cancer and given about 18 months to two years to live. And so he put his story out there in an email. As a matter of fact, the documentary, uh, the title of the documentary comes from that email that he sent to us that basically said, if you are my brothers, you will get tested and you will know about this disease and you won't be in the situation that I'm in. And that really uh, had an impact on me. And I immediately said, this story needs to be not just among the brothers that are receiving this email, but really that story needs to hit home with a lot of other brothers outside of our own small network. And so I approached uh, this gentleman, I asked him if he would be willing to share his story beyond just the alumni brothers of our uh, Alpha Phi Alpha chapter. And he said, I'm on board. And we began uh, chronicling his journey with prostate cancer. Um, I guess the twist, if you will, because with every story, there's always a twist. Um, in uh, two years into the project, uh, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So when we look at the statistics of, of prostate cancer among African-American men, uh, this particular uh, documentary really just brings that home. Uh, I had no clue, no idea I would become part of the story. But like many of us as African-American men or men of color, we don't expect to be part of the prostate cancer story. So uh, this story really becomes one of, of, of two individuals, one where I was fortunate enough to be diagnosed early. And then you had another person who uh, was diagnosed with a, a, a later stage, more aggressive stage of prostate cancer. And it's, it's our journey, but we're connected through our brotherhood and through our shared experiences. So that's uh, that's about it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for sharing that. Um, I, I definitely think that's a great segue actually into the first question that I have here um, for all of you. So if you would all just kind of give us um, give us a kind of insight into what your motivation was um, for using film as a method or platform, if you will, to, to engage and urge the Black community to have discussions around prostate cancer. Sure. Uh, for me, you know, initially being the only female on this panel, <laughs> I did not have a motivation to uh, do a film about prostate cancer. But a friend of mine, um, Chris Edwards, he came to me because at the time, you know, he was like, look, I, I, I know I'm high risk for prostate cancer because my father and my brother have prostate cancer and no one's talking about it. Like if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have known. And, you know, as he started sharing with me and we started doing research and I'm like, I'm not hearing anyone talk about it either. So I was like, yes, I'm on board, especially when we learned how it affect African-American men. I was like, I'm on board. And so um, we started doing the research on the project and really started to learn how it affects uh, African-American men, I was just like, okay, we need to do something. Film seems like the best medium to do that. It's a way to really reach people. And, and to me, I feel like sometimes it's hard. It just my perspective as a woman, right? I'm coming for, as a woman. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to get men to talk about their health. And when they see it in someone that looks like them, then mm -hmm. they start to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it was really important to me to make sure that we had men from different walks of life, like I said, because the excuses I was hearing was, well, if I just eat right, I'm good. Like, I'm, you know, why do I got to do that? I don't eat meat. I don't eat barbecue, whatever. Right. And we were getting like those kind of excuses or um, I've never heard any. Well, I don't know what's causing it. So why should I, uh, you know, get tested or my faith will heal me. So why should I? Um, go and get a prostate exam, you know, I believe that the Lord will heal me. And so we wanted to make sure that we touched on all those things. And film felt like the best medium to really get that out there that it doesn't matter. We had men from every walks of life. We interviewed pastors, and they talked about, yeah, you're right, God will heal you, but faith without works is dead. And that's, you know, whatever your religious belief is, just making sure that we were touching on all these things, so that there were no more excuses to just get tested, right? Just 
know what your baseline is and know, you know, take responsibility for your health. Mm -hmm. And so film just felt like the best medium to do that. Um, Like I said, just to make sure that they were seeing themselves reflected in the faces of the men that we interviewed. And that has definitely worked for us. Yeah. If I might add, um, you know, I, I touched upon my motivation for doing the film um, because of my own journey as a prostate cancer survivor warrior uh, and uh, my having shared that information with my brothers and then they were both tested. Uh, and so that was uh, essentially the motivation for my doing the film. Um, but I got a bit of a reality check uh, not so very long ago. I mentioned that uh, my film featured prostate cancer survival warriors uh, telling their own stories. Um, and recently, two of those men transitioned. Uh, they both passed uh, six days apart. Um, so that has given me great motivation to do a sequel to The Black Walnut, um, one that, uh, that features uh, surviving family members, particularly women, wives, uh, adding their perspective of how uh, their loss uh, that was caused by prostate cancer, uh, that was caused by late stage diagnosis of prostate cancer, how that loss has affected uh, uh, them and their families. Um, so for me, the motivation, uh, particularly with the uh, with the uh, uh, the way that the Black Walnut has been received, uh, is to do a sequel. Uh, to to add a different perspective. Um, and the uh, trailer uh, for the film is basically like a, a preview. Um, we open with a, um, and it was maybe prophetic, I don't know, uh, because the story was fiction, but we open with a cemetery scene. Um, and we, there's a suggestion throughout the trailer that uh, someone has died from prostate cancer. And we're talking about this particular person. Um, but this particular person shows up at the end uh, to suggest, you know, that once you take care of, of yourself, you, do, you don't necessarily need to fa- face that outcome. Um, but now, again, in reflection, having included that uh, as a trailer, and I wrote the trailer before I wrote the script, um, it, it just, again, seems a bit prophetic. And uh, with the loss of these two friends, there is great motivation to to do a sequel uh, and incorporate a, a, a much, uh, not more profound, but a very profound angle with people that have experienced the loss of loved ones due to prostate cancer. Yeah, for, for me, I think the first initial motivation was Ralph and, and that was my frat brother's name, uh, fraternity's brother's name was Ralph Franklin. Um, and I said was because, as Terrence mentioned, um, with, after about six years of, of us being around him and, and, and having that bond, he, he passed away. Um, and um, ironically, um, the day before he passed, we were actually with him sort of in a, 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 a I guess, family reunion, if you will. Um, where that was the last time he was with his, his, his family. And we initially decided not to go, but we went. And I was just so blessed that we, you know, from, from his courage, that was another motivation. His courage, he was positive throughout this entire process. He knew that it was important for him as a lawyer. He was always investigating, you know, new treatments. And, and be, he was involved in, in a clinical study. Um, that strength and that him, you know, really putting all of this on the line and being able to share it was, was my motivation. And then of course, the, uh, the, the second booster in all of this, you know, and the stages in a rocket, right. That really propelled me to say, oh, wow, we, we have to, you know, this has to be something that we've got to get the word out was my being diagnosed was, was a great motivation mm-hmm. and really, um, telling this, telling the story, and then when 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 Ralph passed, it became uh, a, a legacy for him and his courage. Um, and his wife recently passed, so um, you know this is this was really important to me, um, and it really led me to making this 
not only about a documentary, but because of my public broadcasting um, background, I've been involved in other projects. It also had a community outreach uh, part to it. So, you know, in public broadcasting, it's all about extending the shelf life of your project. It's not just about getting it on TV or getting it in theaters. It's about how do we inter interconnect that uh, particular way that you're getting the message out, which is through a documentary or film, and build a uh, community around that. So that was the, the other motivation for, for really, um, you know, making this a labor of love, if you will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, and, and I know all of you have uh, somewhat touched on this, but um, this, this, the, the conversation around prostate cancer, particularly in, in the Black community, is something that is not often discussed within our own community. Um, so what would you all, if, if there was a point or maybe two major points that you could kind of touch on um, uh, to address like what the most challenging aspect was about getting the folks to actually talk about their health? Um, and how that kind of contributed to the amazing work that you all have done. Is it back to me? <laughs> yeah, I guess I so, Londi. So, so I would, yeah, Londi, Londi and Red. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Londi. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. You asked again, what was the... Yeah, so what would you, what would you say are the most challenging, like what were the most challenging aspects of, of getting folks to actually talk about their health uh, in particular? Yeah. Um, well, for us, we toured with the film. So one of the most, and we, you know, we went to different states and one of the most challenging aspects, of course, is always funding, trying to get the money to do things like this. Um, really getting the men out there was definitely difficult. Once we got them there, they were engaged, right? So trying to figure out what's the best way to get them to come out, because sometimes you can be um, preaching to the choir, you know, you'll have a lot of people who are either prostate cancer survivors, right, or affected by prostate cancer in some way. So they're there to kind of continue to learn more information, but we really want to get people who hadn't even thought about it yet. So that definitely for us had been a challenge is just, you know, trying to make sure we're, um, you know, finding venues and, and uh, getting support to be able to travel to these places or at least send a movie if if one or two of us can't come and then for us we always wanted to make sure that we were not just playing this movie filling everyone's heads and then leaving them with okay now what do I do right so trying to make sure we had at least a urologist or some type of medical professional to speak after the film definitely you know us as advocates if we could have a prostate cancer survivor so that the men felt like they had someone they could truly connect to was really important to us and then also um, making sure that they had somewhere to go if they needed help like zero zero has been an awesome champion in supporting us in this and so always trying to make sure if we could have a zero representative or if we were somewhere where we couldn't that there was some type of way that they could connect through the 360 program or something that they they knew that they weren't getting all this information and then being left empty-handed and that was super super important to us but also a challenge of trying to tie all those things together is at the end of the day I am a filmmaker and have other films and projects right so still trying to make sure that we we could leave them with that support system as we traveled throughout that was important to us but also challenging for sure absolutely Reggie same same question for you Reggie <laughs> you know um there is some difficulty in telling the story um, because for me, you know, I open myself up to a lot of things. I mean, uh, exams, the uh, uh, biopsy, um, you know, and, and as a man, you kind of got to remember where all of this is happening. Right. <laughs> and my, my cinematographer was one of my closest friends and he's probably seen a lot of me that most people other than my wife is seen. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I think from just from, from, from my perspective, you know, I was inspired by Ralph because Ralph did not care. Ralph was like, I'm having this treatment. Whatever you need to film, you need to film. And so I had to let that go. I had to say to myself, and I give you this, this, one, this one story and then, and then I'll move on. And, and I thought about how am I portraying myself? If I'm not open, then how can other men be open, right? 
And so one of the things that I was always told, a couple of people tell me, oh, the biopsy is horrible. Oh, it hurts. Da, 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 da. You can't. So I'm, I'm having this in my mind going into my first biopsy, which is, you know, on camera. And but I had to say to myself, I've got to look comfortable. I, you know, I've got to endure this, which and it wasn't bad at all. But I didn't want to, you know, to, to have this thing like, oh, you know, I'm tensing up and it's hurting because I'm saying to myself, I've got to have other men to relax and understand that it's a process. That it's not going to kill you. It can actually save your life. So I think for me, conv being convincing, it was was important. But also, I, 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 I really realized that, you know, you get as much as other men will tell you. Some men feel comfortable talk, talking about anything. Um, other men won't go down that incontinence road. They won't go down that ED road. Um, so you take what you can get. And hopefully by telling the whole story, it will make other men, you know, feel comfortable mm -hmm. about maybe not putting their information out to the world and everything else for that matter, but um, having those discussions with family, having those discussions with their partner, um, being open at that level. So I think that's, you take what you can get, I guess, is, is, is um, you know, at the end of the day. I love, I love that. I think that's a, a, a very strong testament to uh, being vulnerable and how strong that actually makes you. Um, and then Londi, I love the point that you made about, um, you know, what, what happens next, right? Like what happens after the diagnosis piece. And I think that's something that I know us at Zero are really working on. Um, Terrence, I do have a question specifically for you. So I know that you, you had mentioned the docudrama style. Um, what, what actually made you want to use that style of, of genre or kind of genre for the actual project that you made? Uh, one thing I learned uh, as an artist, as a playwright, is that uh, American consumers like uh, novelty. Uh, we like things different. And I just wanted to take a, a different approach, um, you know, by having a combination of, uh, of actors and real prostate cancer survivors. And to backtrack for just a second, uh, the only challenge that I had with uh, my prostate cancer survivors, they were all eager and anxious to tell their stories. Uh, but some of them, uh, including the uh, the urologists and oncologists, were a little bit camera shy. Okay, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I had to get around that. But um, uh, the 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 other thing I'd like to note, though, is that as these prostate cancer survivors were telling their stories and the actors heard their stories, there were two of my cast members that had never been screened before, but were screened for prostate cancer. You know, so, you know, and, and, and even the process of making the film, that critically important message uh, was delivered. Uh, but again, I just wanted to do something a little bit different on that. And, and uh, I am not bashful about telling people that uh, probably the greatest influence on my writing, other than being uh, becoming aware that I was a writer, reading uh, William Cullen Bryant's uh, poem, Thanatopsis, that's when I realized I was a writer. Um, but the, the greatest influence on my, on my approach to writing Believe it or not, was Rod Serling, The Twilight Zone, because he wrote things to make people think, you know, to make people consider possibilities, to make people feel. And even as a, uh, as a kid and as a, a young teen, that, that impressed me tremendously. Um, so that's why I took a novel approach to this particular production. Mm. I love that. So I know that we've we've somewhat discussed. Uh, all of us have have somewhat discussed and, and touched on, you know, like your motivations. Um, but what is one thing that you hope that your film um, and work can actually do for the audience? What's one thing that you hope that they take away from this? The the theme of uh, of the of the Black Walnut is all of the prostate cancer survivors are being recruited as an army to spread the word about the importance of early detection uh, and to increase, increase awareness of the African-American prostate cancer disparity. So when people see the film, that is what I want them to take away, to be motivated themselves, uh, not necessarily to produce a film, but to be motivated to spread the word, you know? And uh, uh, the, very, the very first screening, I completed the film as a, uh, as a culminating strategic initiative from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Fellowship. And after the, the film was completed, the very first screening was for the University of Alabama, Birmingham, for a bunch of health educators across the Southeast. And man, they they were really truly motivated to go out and, and continue spreading the word. So that's what I'd like to do is, to, is for the film to recruit an army of uh, of advocates 
uh, of activists to increase awareness of the disparity, as well as the importance of early detection in the African American community. That's awesome. I would say for me, I didn't mention this, but um, when six months into doing our research on the film, my father was diagnosed with stage one prostate cancer and he agreed to be in the movie. And, you know, because I had been working on the movie, I was able to like arm him with all this information, right, that he could take to his doctor and he could ask educated questions and be empowered by that and realize, yes, he's been diagnosed with prostate cancer, but it's not necessarily a death sentence, right? And so, you know, when we first hear the word cancer, I don't care who you are, your brain kind of just shuts down and then it's like, um, I don't know what else you have to say to me. I just heard you tell me that I have cancer, right? Which is why a lot of times they encourage you to bring someone with you. And so for me, I just know how, you know, my father told me he felt when he was able to ask his doctor questions because he was armed with all that information. And I hope our movie can really help other men do the same. You know, fear comes from the lack of knowing, right? A lot of men don't want to have the prostate exam. They don't want to have a DRE. They're not sure about a PSA. Like they don't want to do any of these things because they've heard all these horror stories, you know, really to Reggie's point, right? But knowledge is powerful. And when they're armed with that knowledge, or even, you know, we haven't really touched on this, but we know that sometimes their primary care doctors may not be offering them a PSA or a DRE, right? And so to, to go in there and kind of, like I said, take responsibility for their health to say, you know, what about this? Well, I'm over 50 or I'm 45, but I know my father had prostate cancer or grandpa or uncle Joe or grandpa, you know, grandpa uh, Sam had, he died of something and I just learned it was prostate cancer. So maybe I should be getting tested, it, you know, because these are the things in our culture that we don't talk about. Everybody knows that uncle so-and-so died of something, but we don't know what it was. And then you learn, wow, all these people in my family have prostate prostate cancer and then you go to your doctor and they're not testing you for a PSA or you know what I mean and so to arm them with that information now they can go to their doctors and ask educated questions and if they're feeling they're not supported they can decide well is this really the right doctor for me because we touched a lot on our in our film about how a lot of people in the African-American community have the distrust of physicians and how we can change that Right. So really, like I said, uh, our goal is to arm men with uh, knowledge so that if they are in this situation, they can ask their doctor educated questions. If they are, you know, over 40, they can start asking about a PSA or a DRE. You don't have to wait for your doctor to offer you these things. You can actually ask. Right? <laughs> I know it don't sound sexy, but you can still do it. So that way you're not hit with something later out of the blue that you had no clue you were even susceptible to. So that's, that's our goal with our film. Thank you so much, Londi. So many gems. Um, someone tweet, someone has to tweet that that fear comes from the lack of knowing. I think that is a gem and one that I think everybody here should be uh, talking about. Um, Reggie, same question for you. Yeah, uh, a couple of things. One of the th things I, I think with this film and, and what we're trying to do is to move from health awareness to health action. Um, you know, uh, it, it's one thing to hand somebody a, a pamphlet or, you know, to give them a sheet of paper or even to talk to them about, about prostate cancer. But I'm hoping with what I'm doing and what the three of us are doing is really by telling these stories is to move beyond, again, from health awareness to health action. And, and I like to use what my wife has coined life over libido. Um, to get around that. And I think, you know, telling a true story of one person who was diagnosed early um, and 12 years later, as I celebrate that anniversary in about three or four days, and another person who was a lawyer, smart, at the top of his game, diagnosed young, aggressive uh, form of cancer, and uh, is no longer with us as a result. Um, I, I, those two stories, and, and, and as Lonnie mentioned, Lonnie mentioned, you know, all of those things about b distrust and how uh, Ralph was almost misdiagnosed given, you know, two years he had given up 
until someone said, you need to get a second opinion. That second opinion led to four more years of him being with us, the four more years of, of hope and being with his family and seeing his first grandchild and those kinds of things. Mm. So this story plays out. Um, and I will say that as, as we look to rework the story now to bring it, you know, even so many things have happened and, and to deal with survivorship, like Terrence mentioned, this is an ongoing story, particularly with me. So as we rework this film now to include survivorship, um, to include, you know, where we are now in research and, and all of the things that are available and organizations like Zero bringing all of this to the attention of, of men um, uh, across the country and around the world, um, having, uh, moving into this new kind of phase of things, um, as I, I, just one example, I, I sent the rework outline to my cousin who is a writer and her husband is my first cousin, family history of cancer. She read the outline, made her husband go to get his PSA checked, looked back at other PSAs and they saw it was on the rise. And long story short, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Now his family uh, has uh, three of his siblings has passed away from cancer. Um, and so just on reading the story, she was motivated to get him to do something. And I think that, um, is important. I'm here because I was motivated by Ralph's story to do something. And so I tell people all the time, if if there's only one person that, you know, this documentary has saved a, a life, uh, we can start with mine because I could have easily let it go, PSA, you know, below two, I'm getting older, no big deal. Um, but we pressed on, I pressed on and, and my physician team did as well. And I was diagnosed early enough to still be here and tell the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we've we've definitely we've definitely um, we definitely recognize that this is a very unique platform um, and kind of vehicle to to move this message across to the masses. Uh, what would you all say? It's a question for all of you. What would you? What kind of advice would you give to someone who's interested in using film or just any other un unorthodox kind of platform? Um, to advance health equity and awareness of prostate cancer. And to, to Reggie, I love that point that you made to kind of get folks to move from the health awareness point uh, to the health action piece. Yeah, you want me to go? I can go first this time. Let go me. ahead, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know what? Because it's, it's real simple. Tell the story, be true to the story, um, and be real and be honest. Uh, and I think if you do that, whatever platform you use, you will make a difference in 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 what uh, in having an impact on on someone doing something um and and that's and that's that's the thing you got to do it's got to be be true be honest and 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 tell the story i totally agree with that definitely be true and honest um look for awesome partners who will support you in this like zero zero has definitely been a champion in supporting, I know, well, I'm sure the other filmmakers on the panel, but I, as I speak for myself, they've been so supportive in, um, in our efforts to travel with the film, doing uh, men's roundtable discussions, like they've just been awesome and finding an awesome partner is definitely important because it is a lot of work. Like you think you're just doing a film, but you're not, you're doing, <laughs> you are becoming an advocate and it's a beautiful thing. You know, it is a lot of work but it's a beautiful thing and so having that support system especially when it gets a little difficult you feel like why am I doing all this this is crazy if you are someone who like uh Reggie and Terrence you guys are also survivors you're like I got my own stuff I also am dealing with on top of trying to get the word out it's a lot so having a strong support system I think is really really important in order to do that yeah, I, I would add, uh, you know, I, by repeating what uh, both uh, uh, Landi and Reggie said, that you have to approach it with uh, with some commitment to to telling the truth and, and being genuine about it. Uh, I think that uh, one thing that uh, I would suggest to any uh, filmmaker uh, uh, going to approach this topic is to make sure that uh, you touch upon things like the social determinants of health, uh, cultural competency, uh, provider bias, uh, the importance of clinical trials. I alluded to the fact earlier that addressing the disparity, it, it, it takes a uh, kind of a, a overall global uh, 
uh, look at the disparity. Um, and I, I think that uh, uh, that's, that's critical uh, to telling the, the truth, to telling the entire story. And there's just so many different uh, components. Uh, I would also suggest that uh, as I have benefited from uh, these conversations that we've had uh, previously with uh, Londi and Reggie, uh, talk to other filmmakers, uh, filmmakers that have done this work uh, because they can provide a, a critically important insight as to how to approach it, the, the challenges that you might encounter, uh, you know, uh, and, and how people will, in fact, work with you if you approach them in the, the right way. I got a lot of support from the city of Norfolk government uh, and uh, the medical community in telling the story. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and definitely before we uh, move on to the question and, and, and uh, answer portion of this, um, I, I definitely wanted to give you all a moment to kind of highlight any of the other projects that you're working on, anything else that you're working on that you want to talk about. Um, and then this is a two part question. And then also, how can we at zero or just folks within the audience, right? Like, how can we continue to grow these types of efforts? Um, I know we talked a little bit on the challenges, but like, what are some solutions that you all can kind of provide for us? I, I have a uh, project that um, that has been going very well. Uh, it's called The Angels and the Details. Uh, my church, this is not health related, but when you talk about the social determinants of health, as my church is an African American church, uh, there's some relevance there. Um, this film is uh, about my church, the, the only African American basilica in the nation. It's a Catholic church. Uh, we recently completed a $6.7 million renovation. And during that process, we discovered, made some uh, incredible uh, discoveries. Uh, we discovered that there were two underground tunnels beneath the church. Uh, one, uh, we have very confidence played a, a major role in the Norfolk branch of the Underground Railroad. We discovered a cemetery beneath the church uh, and uh, you know, several of the remains that were exhumed appear to be people of African descent. Uh, we learned that the, uh, that the African-American uh, participation with this church goes all the way back to 1791 when the church was founded uh, under another name, St. Patrick's Church. And it was founded by Euro European immigrants as well as free and enslaved blacks. Uh, that church was burned to the ground in 1856 because they were allowing black people to attend. It is also believed that uh, they were doing uh, interracial marriages in the 1800s in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, so it's just some incredible stuff. And the film has been doing exceedingly well. Uh, again, I feel very blessed with that. Um, that's the, the other project that I just recently completed and I'm about to do a couple other things. But um, uh, what I would say to Zero is, uh, as evidenced by you having three filmmakers on this panel, you, you, you surely appreciate uh, the potency of, of this media as a, as a, a critically uh, valuable way to deliver this important message. I, I would say continue on that path. Um, because you will not just uh, reach people uh, that are going to benefit from having this information, uh, but you will also inspire people to, to go along that same course. Um, and I uh, say kudos to, uh, to Zero, and I look forward to uh, participating in the, I did it this year, the 5K here in Norfolk, uh, Virginia Beach. Um, I, I, I don't know, I'm just very, very keen on uh, Zero. Go ahead, Reggie. I'll go last. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can tell folks that we were, you know, we we're, we're, were all a family. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been through this together. Well, one of the things for me, you know, is 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 taking uh, this project from from the analog into the digital uh, world uh, to build around to build on the story about survivorship. Um, I think the story is intriguing that you have two different people and then the filmmaker gets prostate cancer, but the story continues. And so how do we re rework the film really to bring that in, to bring it up to date technologically, but also in the way we, we, we message. Um, the other part is to, to build around social media. Um, I think it's important that, you know, younger people sort of get the story a little bit that they kind of have that in their memory banks, if you will. My son has been so involved in this. You know, he is now himself a filmmaker. He started 
when he was about 12 years old carrying, you know, tripods around. And now we're having discussions and meetings about how we're going to rework this project uh, for the 21st century. And it's such a wonderful thing. But now he understands the importance of keeping up with this PSA. And he also understands how we might be able to um, package this message for uh, a younger generation. So that's important, you know, that's something that we that I'm working on now. And the other one is, is a uh, companion podcast um, with, uh, if you are my brothers, we I've been doing podcasting now for about four, three or four years. My son and I actually have a podcast together. It's called Boomer and the Millennial. And we act, we've been doing it for about two and a half years. And we talk about all kinds of issues, but prostate cancer has been part of that. Health has been part of those conversations of uh, two different generations. So to really, you know, start the, the rework the film and also to uh, build in social media and podcasting is, is sort of next. And, and understanding their other projects, but as Lon, Londi and Terrence both mentioned, this is an ongoing thing. I think you cannot be a filmmaker or in this business and just say, I'm going to do prostate cancer and that's it. It is, it is <laughs> ongoing. And, and zero, you folks, you do a great job of letting us know this is an ongoing struggle and your name is zero, right? To get to the point where we don't have prostate cancer anymore. So I, I, I'm very uh, engaged and excited about still being a part of this journey. That's awesome. Well, first, I have to say kudos to both you gentlemen. You guys are amazing. It has been fun to be on this film series journey with the two of you. I appreciate you guys so much because it's true. Like we all have films that touch on different things that should tell you how vast this um, issue is, right? And, and how you can touch lives in different ways. All three of our movies appeal to different men in a way that um, can help connect them to start to think, okay, maybe it's time for me to get tested, or maybe I need to talk to my loved one about it. You know, coming from the perspective as a woman, I'm now my father, my brother, my, <laughs> you know, that we can start having these conversations. So it's been a pleasure to be on this with the two of you. And thank you, Chris, for facilitating this today. Um, for us, uh, we've been working on this for a while, and I'll be honest, I, I kind of got distracted with other projects, but but now we're full fledged. We've done some updating to the film as well um, with the help of Zero. Zero gave us, us some awesome new stats. So we just completed some of those updates and we're getting ready for distribution on the film. So hopefully it will be on a streaming platform near you very soon. But you can always follow where we're at with that process by going to our website, thesilentkillerdoc.com. Um, that's the silentkillerdoc.com. Um, and then also, I also run a, a, a nonprofit called Women of Color Filmmakers, and we are starting a, um, a health series. So women in our organization who want to do films, um, documentaries, or even narrative films in the prostate cancer, not just prostate cancer, but cancer space right? Um, we're starting that process. So, uh, you know, it's a journey <laughs> and hopefully we can eradicate some of these things that are definitely um, plaguing the African-American communities specifically, but just in general, just making sure that people are thinking more about their health and that we're no longer hearing about people dying from things that if it was just caught sooner, you know, they could have survived it or they could have got treatment and, and their lives could have been extended. That's, that's definitely our goal. Amazing. I definitely want to take a second to thank all of you um, for your honestly incredible work. I know that the impact and reach that all of your films have made um, just across, I mean, to, to all of your points, just across generations, um, communities, different, different, different types of, of, of folks has is, is been amazing to see. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to get to work with you all and get to know you all. You're all extremely creative people. Um, and, and I don't get to say that often. So thank you so much for taking your time. Um, it doesn't look like we've got any questions right this second. Um, so again, I, you know, if, if folks are interested in this kind of work, please feel free to reach out to these wonderful folks. I'm sorry I'm throwing you under the bus, but your work is so incredible. And I really do hope that um, more people get to see it. I know us at Zero are doing our part. And so please, if you're in the Atlanta area, quick shameless plug, uh, in the Atlanta area on November 19th, we'll actually be showing the Black Walnut um, Terrence's film uh, at Impact Church. And 
So we're looking forward to continuing this series and, and, and making sure that we can spread the message across the country. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for Carissa. having us. Thank you. And thank you for your team and what Zero continues to do. Yes, thank you. Thank you.